Hello everyone, welcome to Smart Investing. Today is January 18th, Tuesday, 4.44 p.m. Today's video is going to be about the, let's see which one I'm doing. I'm doing the banking sector. Um, later on, I'm doing the special dividends. But yeah, I'm doing the, the banking sector services. Today I have about 17 stocks left for the banking services sector. So I'm going to be using the Webull app like always. Let's open that up and get started and take a look. So first things first, I'm not a registered financial advisor. I wish I was, but I'm not. And so this video is for educational purposes only. If you're going to invest in the stock market, please consult a registered financial advisor that is insured and licensed. So again, I have 17 stocks and let's begin with the first one. The first one that I have is NECB. Let me move my camera a little bit out of the way so that way. Sorry, I don't know why that didn't go through. So NECB, we're going to do a fundamental and technical analysis. I apologize for the moving so much of the camera, but we're going to be doing a financial and technical analysis so the market's already closed like about 45 minutes ago and we have this stock at 11.43 so what I'm looking at is hold on let me get my and and show you so what I'm looking at is this the 52 week low and 52 week high so for the whole year it's only been a seven dollar difference which is not much compared to other stocks should be more so we have a turnover percentage of 0.26 which is really low Earnings are pretty low compared to what I've seen before. So we look at the one year, you see this big drop right here, and then it drops down all the way to like 10 bucks. Then it slowly gains, slowly gains all the way up here, which is not even $2 move, not even. So that alone tells me it's going super slow. When analysts do projections, yeah, they might do it quarterly and have certain expectations. But again, each stock is independent as to the buyers and sellers. So this is why I don't believe in analyst estimates. They can analyze all they want, but it all really comes down to is the activity of the volume, which is the activity of the buyers and sellers, and then also the range, how often, you know, they're buying and selling. So if we look at it fundamentally, so let's look at this chart. So you can see it's slowly growing and it's in a wedge formation. So we look at the financials, net income is 730K. The debt is 77%. Now this is quarterly, let's look at it annually. I do not have, or they are not showing 2021 estimates, they're only showing 2020 results. So Northeast Com, uh, compared to its peers, doesn't look that good. Let's see if they pay dividends. 
So they had uh, barely paid raising dividends. Let's see if they had any splits. No splits. Uh, let's look at it financially again. So earnings uh, earnings estimates. When it comes to banks, it's anything goes. It's usually the popular stocks that gain. So we have the net margin. They don't even have that. Um, again, it just yeah. Revenue is the same. Net income is the same. Balance sheet looks the same. Cash flow. Uh, 15 point. Cash flow has gotten worse. So next up. So not a good stock overall. Not even for fundamentals or technicals. So next up that I have is NRIM. NRIM, not bad. The volume, eh, it could be better. PE is pretty low. The earnings are really good. Low turnover rate. They are paying a dividend. They are in... Positive territory, so it gained here, and then it's kind of flat here, playing up and down with this move. But now the 200 moving average, which is the brown line here, this is what I'm using for my 200 period moving average, so it's still in positive territory for gaining, but... The volume is pretty low. Let's look at it financially for the year. Real quick. Net margins. They don't have it. So ROE, ROA. So we have it at, the debt has gone slightly up. The net income has gone slightly, well, actually a lot. It's gone up a lot. So you see this uptrend right there. That's pretty good. Uh, balance sheet. I've seen better balance sheets in the past years. It's actually pretty hard to find a company that has really low debt. And obviously everybody knows that interest rates are low, so it's easier and more profitable profitable to take on debt as of right now. So let's see, you know, financing. Looks like they received 439. 380. So this company needs work on cash flow. The cash flow is not all that. So let's look at the next one. So for this one, I'd say no. Need some work, but their earnings are pretty good. I'll give them that. Their earnings for that company, they are pretty good for their earnings. Next one up, FDBC. So you see that downtrend, and then it's like curving. And then from here, it kind of went up. And now it went back down. Um, It's got work to do. You can see the volume is really, really low. It's awful, actually. Earnings are okay. Turnover rate low, which is good. Um, I stay away from this stock fundamentally. And technically, too. So now let's look at the company. Revenue and net income. 
So we have this revenue going up. Net income is the same. Looks the same. It says year over year. They've gone up 12.5%. Well, the thing is too... Oh, sorry. The thing is too, this company's in the millions. Let me look at their market cap. Because it doesn't seem like... That's why 300 million. So they're definitely a very small cap company and bank compared to their peers. So we have 90% debt. Let's see if they pay, they do pay rising dividends, but it's just not worth it. They have not done any splits, which is good. Let's look at the financials again. Uh, 2021, hopefully. No, they only have 2020. I don't really look at the key indicators anymore because, you know, it's like everything has gone up. Everybody's receiving money lately, easy money. So the net income has gone up. Revenue has gone up. Surprisingly, not showing the operating income. Assets have gone tremendously up, almost twice as much, actually can see here in 2020 so you have to take that line just about so if you color that in that's almost like half almost half for the assets and liabilities so obviously banks are taking on even more debt which is not uh it doesn't phase me, you know, it's not uncommon, you know, it's pretty common for banks to do that. So we're looking at the cash flow. It's decent for what they have, but against their peers, they need to do much, much better to compete in the overall market against their peers. Looking at this downtrend do not like it volume i do not like earnings are okay so this is excuse me i apologize this is fifth third bank earnings are paying dividends so we look at the split Now let's look at the income. That is 88%. So now let's see if they show margins. Some companies do show margins. I don't know why this one's not showing. So debt is about the same. Net income in 2020 has gone down. Revenue has gone up. I just, I do not like that when the assets are so close to the liabilities. You know, it's just insane. Taking on more debt, obviously. Cash flow, it's not all that. And so this looks like a company that needs work also. This company also needs work. I stay away from that one. Next up that I have is TC. BIO, TCBIO, Texas Cap Bank. Volume is pretty low. Earnings look pretty good. I rarely see a rating of four. I say rating, but it's the earnings. Um, let's look at the chart again. Chart, come on, there we go. Looks pretty flat to me. Let's look at the annual. Okay, revenue and net income. The debt is pretty high. 5.5% and this company pays dividends. They just started paying dividends, which ain't bad. I don't like that volume, so I'm gonna stay away from this company. Next up I have is A-R-O-W. Arrow Financial. Volume's okay. 
Earnings per share looks okay. PE looks okay. They are at 11. Then we have the financials. Let's look at the annual report. So financials, oh, they've gone down. Now let's look at the income. Income has gone up, that's good. Revenue has gone up. Even if it's gone up slightly, that's still a good thing. We've gone slightly up, which is good for the assets and liabilities. Cash flow. Cash flow is pretty good. They can definitely take a hit for the year if need be and still pay dividends. Split ratio, I do not like that. Last split was in 2003, so that's not a habit, not a bad habit so far. So consistently they've been paying 26 cents. It's okay. This company's okay. This company, I would say, be good to watch list. It would be a decent company to watch list. VEL is the next company. Velocity Financial. Oh, okay. So they're not paying dividends. This is very, very rare. Share price is pretty low. Looking flat. 52-week high and low. I'm going to look at, so $6.00. And changes the lowest, and fourteen dollars is the fifty-two week high. I would actually watch list this. It's undervalued, and they're not paying a dividend. Now let's look at the financials, because you really don't have companies in the banking sector that do not pay dividends. Earnings, it shows that they're negative. I don't know why, but let's take a look at that. Mm, I guess this company just started out or something. This, I don't know, it seems, from what I'm seeing, they seem like a pretty new company. They, have, they don't look like they've been around that long. I'm going to look at the market cap again. Oh, this one shows net margins. So 10%, their margins gone up and down, but not by much. Their debt has gone down, which is pretty good. Net income. Revenue has gone up. Yeah, if revenue's not going up for any company, just, yeah, just trash it. It's it's not, that's not good. Net income has gone up. So operating. Yeah, this is, that's why. It's a small cap company. I think that's why. 427 million dollar company so next one up so i say leave this alone um there are better ones out there next one up i have is ff and w first financial north we have earnings for share 1.2 dividend of 0.44 volume market cap needs to be better Volume needs to be better. Turnover is good. The range needs to improve. So let's look at the... It looks It looks like it's gone up the beginning of the last year, but it hasn't gained much throughout the whole year. Now let's look at the annual report. Revenue is looking like it's about the same... I'm not fond of it. I'm not crazy about this stock. Yeah, rising dividends, but by penny. Uh, profile, First Financial, Northwest. Yeah, I'd say find a new stock. So, so far I have one on the list that's a watch list. All these other ones are pretty much trash. 
SIV BP. So we had F, FB SIV. This is an up and down stock. I'm not crazy about it. Volume. Whoa. Look at the earnings. But then the PE is really low. That's weird. Market cap is 365. This is weird. High earnings, but the PE ratio is showing that this company is very undervalued. Weird. I don't get it. Let's look at the earnings report for this one. Uh, financials. Seems like a good company, but very undervalued. Very unpopular. Institutions. Oh, because not a lot of institutions are involved in it. But let me look at the financials real quick, and then we'll look at the dividends. So we have debt, 92%. They grew their debt. Net income has gone up. Revenue has gone up. Operating income has gone up. Cash flow, investing, financing. So the company seems like it's doing good. I would say watch list this company. Doesn't seem like a bad company. It just seems like Yeah, I'd watch it for a few months. So in the last three months, they have only gone down, as you can see here, last three months, only 88 cents, down 3%. Yeah, they just seem like, seem decent. Next up, WSBF, not NFBF. That was a typo. Wow, they dropped down after the dividends. Nice volume, earnings, nice, dividend, they can cover it. So Waterstone Financial, now let's look at the earnings financially. So we have here, net income revenue, the revenue has gone up. Net income in 2020 has gone up. That's good. This seems like a company to watch list as well. Hold on. Let me look at the financials again. Oh, earnings have gone down. Net margins. So net income, that is really good from 2019 to 2020. And revenue has gone up as well. Operating income, no. Then you have balance sheet, assets and liabilities, operating income and investing. This is all the cash flow I'm looking at. So decent cash flow. Let me look at the market cap, 522 million. So let's see something. Decent company. I would I would watch list this company. So in 2020, the cash, like I said, the net income and cash flow went up. They pay special dividends. Have they been paying special dividends every year? Yeah, this is a special dividend paying company. So I guess I'm gonna add this to the description after this video. This is a bonus stock uh they are paying uh, 
Dividends seem stable. They don't seem like they're paying a consistent rising dividend, but they do pay a special dividend, which is good. As you can see, one, at least once a year. So I would add this stock to the list. I would add it to, um, let me see. Seems more like a growth stock. I mean, they're slowly growing, you know, and they pay dividends. I, I would add it. I would add it to the watch list, definitely. This seems like a good stock to actually buy if they're going to pay special dividends. Next up that I have is EBTC. I only have a few more, so we're almost done. So Enterprise Bank Corp. Look at that growth. I like that line just shooting up, you know, like a lot of stocks, you just see them like this like that and then kind of like and then like that and just kind of flatten out you know this one is just like this stock is just flat and then it just kind of goes up i really like that i really like seeing that when you see stock charts and all these stocks with the you know with the ups and downs you can tell already uh, how good is a stock because it's always going up rather than down, up and down. So you can see here, even though it's flat, even though it's flat here, it just kind of shoots up, which is really good. So it just breaks out from their previous levels of pricing. So earnings seem good. Let's see if they pay rising dividends um only by a penny uh financials we have financials here 2020 list so net income and revenue we have rising revenue and net income is about the same Now, if we look at financial details, we see the net income, 2020. Revenue has gone up, operating income, eh. Assets and liabilities, about the same operating financing has gone up investing has gone down um again this stock seems okay but it's just the dividends that are pretty low and the volume I'm not too crazy about. I'd pass on this stock, I'd find another one. So next up, WABC, West America Bank. So wow, look at that dip. You see it went up, then gone flat, and then it went down, and then it's just pretty much flat. Yeah, it's gone up here, but I just, yeah, that's a big dip. This right here is a really big dip. I'm not liking that. The volume is okay. But, um, yeah, I don't like that dip. So they pr seem pretty consistent. That looks good. The financials seem pretty good. The debt, let's see, lower than others. Uh, these are the indicators that I like to look at because these key indicators here, um, I don't know, they, they just seem inaccurate. And the reason I say that is because I want to see 2021 estimates because the year has passed. So it doesn't seem like they've updated it. And we're already in 2022. 
So for me to rely on that, those are very, very important indicators. So it doesn't seem like it's updated. So I'm not going to really rely on that, which is why I've been skimming. Um, typically, you don't, this doesn't really get updated as much. The income statement and the balance sheet, and then, sorry, and the cash flow. That doesn't get updated like. You know, that doesn't change all that often. It's changed quarterly. Net income has gone up. Revenue has gone up. Operating income, uh, about the... Oh, no, I was going to say about the same, but hopefully it is. But it doesn't show anything. I'm assuming it is. Assets have gone about the same, slightly up from 2019 to 2020. Operating cash flow, investing. So we have that that cash flow seems pretty good they seem like they know what they're doing now let's look at the dividends rising dividends every other year seems like only by a penny so i think they're better stocks than this just because it, it has dipped down uh, for the year. Sorry. So the next stock that I have is GBNY. GBNY volume I do not like. They are not paying a dividend. It's a fairly new company then. $29 million. This company might seem like a growth stock. Um, let me look at the five year. Oh no. Never mind. Well, yeah, never mind. Nobody likes this stock, I guess. So low volume. We have uh Net income and revenue. Revenue has gone up. Let's look at the financial details. Net income, revenue has gone up. Balance sheet gone up. Cash flow, investing, and financing. So, I'd stay away from it. I'd definitely stay away from it. If this was a new company, it'd seem okay, but they haven't earned anything for the year. Volume sucks. Doesn't seem like anybody's buying it. The chart is awful. Hasn't gained anything. Next up, LMST. I don't like this stock either. It's at nineteen dollars sixty four cents. Volume I don't like. Market cap too low. Um, yeah, I'd stay away from this stock. Even though it shoots up, yeah, I'd stay away from it. Hardly no volume. I don't even have to look at the, yeah, they're not paying a dividend either. Yeah, I don't even have to look at the um, financials. Let's see if they show margins for the each quarter, and they don't. Now, let's look at it for 20. See, they show 2021 quarterly, but I want to see annually. So we can see, yeah. Net income has dropped. Yeah, this is a bad stock. I stay away from it. Horrible. Horrible, horrible. MFNC is the next one. Company has delisted. So let's see what has happened to this one. Let's look at the news. 
Um, okay, let me go back to the chart and see when it has delisted. So somewhere at about September of 2021, let me go back, sorry. Now let's see here. Now let's go back to the news. So did this company get bought out or something? Let's see. So it says here, right here. So they did get bought out. They got bought out at a 69% premium. So they paid 69% above the share price. So let's look at um, the one year. So where's that bump at? So we're looking at So we're looking at about let's say 1350 Let's do the math. So let's do uh 1350 times 70% $9.45. Plus 13.5. So we're looking at $23. Just about. So it has not even reached $23. Let's see what we got at the highest 22. So they were about a dollar away from that. To, to be exact, it was, uh, I had $22.95, but five cents off. So yeah, a dollar away close enough right so i'd stay away from it so i got two more stocks we're almost done and i will call it a day so next up i have mns bp main street bank volume i don't like look how flat that looks horrible stock right off the bat dividend yield looks nice but just the volume is unattractive you know Net income has gone up, revenue has gone up, but I just, I don't like it. I don't like it, I don't like it at all. Let's look at the income. So they have paid dividends. So I'd say no to that one. Last one up is UCBIO. This is the last one ugly stock look at that chop look at that chop up and down 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 that's just horrible 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 you never want to see stocks like that never very unstable volume is horrible pe is way too low turnover rate seems good the yield i mean it's attractive but it's a trap i don't really like it it's just a horrible stock and then definitely this. Look at that. Only a $2 difference for the year 26 and 28. $2 difference. Horrible company. Um, I don't care for it. This is a bad stock if you've been looking around for banks. So that's all I have for you. So that is all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I will put the banks that were good and the one that was a special dividend payer, that one seemed okay. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, learned something from it. Like, subscribe, and comment if you want to. Uh, I leave my videos ad revenue free, so you don't have to watch any ads throughout this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my stock picks um again a lot of 
things on this list are just horrible. I have the list in front of me on paper. So, um, yeah, these 17 stocks, I only found like maybe two or three. So, uh, stay safe, uh, keep investing, and uh, be smart about it. I'll see you guys in the next one. My next one's going to be the special dividend stocks. So, I'm checking out, and I will see you guys in the next one.